Hi there, I'm Tina Makua from CW31's Good Day Sacramento. On TV, yes, as an anchor, a reporter. I'm also a relative, a friend, a sister, and more importantly, a mom. Have you heard of strep throat? Yeah, I've heard of strep throat. I can go out and do anything for about a week and a half or so. Have you heard of mono? Yeah, I've heard of mono. Yeah, my friend Hannah, she gets nobody for like a month. Have you heard of hepatitis? So I had an uncle who had hepatitis. He was in the hospital for a long time and on a lot of medication. Have you heard of meningitis? I have absolutely no idea what meningitis is. Menin... what? No, I haven't heard of it. What is that? Many of you have never heard of meningococcal meningitis, a disease that affects nearly 3,000 people in America every year. As we watched it progress, it was hard to come to the realization that, of what the actual outcome was going to be. By the time they were able to consult, there was nothing that they could do. The meningitis was, um, had ravaged her body. I said to the receptionist, we suspect meningitis, he has purple blotches, and I understand minutes count. I guess it was about 4 o'clock in the morning when the doctor finally said if anyone needs to see her, they better come now. Because at that point, all the organs were pretty much shut down. It was just a matter of um, letting her go. In this video, you'll be made aware of what this stealthy killer is, meningococcal meningitis, how it's transmitted, what the symptoms are, and how it's treated. First of all, what is meningococcal meningitis anyway? Meningitis is inflammation of the meninges, which is the membranes which surround the brain and the spinal cord. The most common type of meningitis that we see bacterial in adults and teenagers would be Neisseria meningitis causing meningococcal meningitis and meningococcal septicemia. Meningococcal septicemia is when the blood is infected with the bacteria. That is the most concerning. And in the most extreme cases, people can die within 24 hours. It is not uh, spread by breathing in the air of somebody who has the disease. You really have to be in very close and prolonged contact with someone who is infectious or exchange respiratory secretions such as saliva. Adolescents and college students are at increased risk for contracting meningococcal meningitis because of their lifestyle. Spending time in close quarters, attending parties where there's lots of smoking, activities such as kissing, sharing food, drinking from the same bottle, staying up late, resulting in their body's lowered immunity. As many as 25% of the population are asymptomatic carriers which means they are carrying the illness, but are not sick themselves. When they share anything, from sips of soda to drags off of cigarettes, they can infect a portion of the population who are susceptible to the disease and who, then, may get sick with meningitis. People may carry the bacteria in their throat and in their nose and be perfectly healthy. And during certain times of the year, there are more people who may be healthy carriers.